Good morning, everybody. It is your Uncle Fishy back again, bright and early this Tuesday morning for my brand new art streaming show, School of Fish. It's an art stream I'm going to be doing Tuesdays and Thursday mornings at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, 10 a.m. Central. It is airing live on the Agents of Geekdom Network. You can find us everywhere, man. We are on YouTube. We're on Twitch. We're on Facebook. We're even getting to the point. We're about to get it onto TikTok and all the other places, man. You can always tune in, check out what we're doing. We've got something going dang near every single day. And Tuesday and Thursday mornings is all fishies time, baby. And I am here to share what I'm doing and what I'm working on with you. Let's see. I've been having trouble with my mouse. Come on, mousey, help me out here. Last Thursday, when we were on the show, for those of y'all that were here, what is up, Facebook user? Got a sup, bro, from anonymous Facebook user. Probably one of a handful of people I know. Last week, on Thursday, for the Five Star Fridays versus show, we did this awesome storm versus thor piece and y'all didn't get to see me finish it live on the stream but man this thing came out wicked i love the way the lighting came out and the little shine and stuff on the armor and, oh i got so hooked on doing all those crazy little armor pieces drawn steel wolf for eric bennett man i used to hate it now i freaking love it i thought that was the clapback kid, the Chad Mup champion, Mr. Five Star coming in and commenting on my morning stream. Well, that's what we did last week, baby. What are we going to do this week? Well, let me see here. We got a brand new page. We got nothing on it. We are ready to go with something cool and something new. But you're asking yourself, Uncle Fishy, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? Well, let me tell you what we're going to do. All right, I'm going to close this up for just a second. Your Uncle Fishy's been busy since Thursday. Not only have I been chopping up Thursday's video to make lots of little teaser videos and stuff for the TikToks and the whatnot. Oh, baby. Check it out. Your Uncle Fishy has been making wheels and random generators. Oh, man. Let me tell you what. We have put so much stuff into these. I've gotten comments on TikTok videos, comments on Facebook posts. If you've commented a superpower, I have added it to this wheel and I will continue to add it to these wheels. I, and it got so big, I've got superpowers. I've got power modifiers. I've got character accents, things that make this character interesting and cool to fit into green zone. Like sometimes it's character issues and things. Uh, and I even had to make a chart of familiars because that came up a couple of times. And, you know, when it comes to like symbiotes and all kinds of other things. So I've got a whole chart of like 102 different variations of animals and things and like in modifiers in there. Like, what if it's a demon cat? What if it is a shadow giant bat? And so, oh man, it's cool. So we're going to be rolling up a brand new character today. I'm even working on a dice tower so we can randomly roll up like how many powers we're going to get and stuff. But right now, I'm looking to the viewers, I'm looking to commenters, how many powers do you want to see? Because we can do one at a time. We can roll it up randomly and just get powers from a familiar. Talk. That's why we have a familiar table to roll on. Or we could do groups of two, three powers four even groups of five powers personally i kind of like groups of three powers because once it gets too big it gets kind of hard to figure out how to put them all together so for right now while it's just us i'm gonna do groups of three powers and look into it let's see high-tech weapon generation modern weapon generation wing flight insect okay that's cool but that's basically like the beetle for marvel now I don't want to do that. Let's see. Uh, light armor. And I don't mean light. I mean like made of light. Mimics powers of other people in 60 feet. Invisible to all things. Defense power. Mimics opposite power. Voodoo. Let's see. Multiple limbs. Ice armor. Telepath. Super strength. Bio ghost. Multiplication of others. 
bright smile, energy absorption, polymorph, mechanical genius, water manipulation. Hmm. Man, I had <sighs> mimics other mimics powers and others that you touch. Energy manipulation causes hallucinations. Toxic creates sound. Puppet master augmented strength. Plant control. Shadow armor. Winged flight. Detect evil. Ooh. Number 16's looking good right there. I can get some good ideas off of that. Um, let's see. Symbio powers. Multiplicate self. Okay. <laughs> Negate all smell. Gravity manipulation. Bionic arm T-Rex. Yeah, that was... Thanks. That's going to be easy to put into something. Um, air manipulation. Fire manipulation. Path, control magnetic field, rock armor. I'm really kind of digging 16 right now. All right, let's let's look at power modifier and let's see what we get there. Medium power level. Okay. Okay, that's cool. I can live with that. Let's see what kind of accents we're going to get here. Expert power control. Okay, he is an expert at using his medium amount of power. So this isn't this isn't crazy crazy superpower dude. This is, you know, medium tier superpower dude, but he's really good at doing it. Which is something I always find interesting when people really learn how to use their powers well. All right. Let's see. If nobody else has a comment, man, I'm tempted to go with 16. Yeah, we're going to go with 16, because I dig 16. All right, so Shatter Armor, Winged Flight, Bird, and Detect Evil. All right, so we are going to turn off that page. We're going to turn on the art page, baby. How do y'all like the music? I just found out we can do this in Restream, and I'm digging it. Having some little background music going on, keep it interesting. All right, let's see. I'm going to write these down so I don't forget it. Winged Flight. Um, shadow Armor. Detect Evil. And then he was medium power. but an expert at his power level. So this is somebody who has been training in this for a long time. This is somebody who's put a lot of effort into this, really knows what he's doing. This is like ninja level skills with a medium amount of power. So this is somebody that's not as tough as Spider-Man, but could give him a run for his money or take him down because he's really knows how to use what he's got. So, I'm digging that. That is going to be fun. All right, let's make a new layer. Turn it blue because that's how I do. All right. Now, I got to come up with a pose for this dude. I'm just assuming it's a dude. What do y'all think? Is this a guy? Is this a girl? Is this a they? Like, what do y'all think? Anybody in the comments got any suggestions on that? Let me know before I get too far into this. I mean, I am all about female empowerment. And there aren't enough cool, badass female characters to cosplay, personally, I think. Especially not especially not villains. Though I kinda I kinda like the idea, especially with the detect evil 
of this being somebody who looks like a villain but isn't a villain so all right let's see i gotta be able to fly so we got the winged flight I'm thinking sort of like a yeah pose, you know, like, yeah, fear me. I am badass incarnate. Man, you Uncle Fishy has been busy since the last show. I tell you, you think getting on here and just, you know, streaming your art's going to be easy, but man, there's a lot of work involved in this. Like just getting all the promos and the ads and stuff and the backgrounds made and intro videos and still don't have an outro video made yet. There's a lot to it. And then, you know, I got the bright idea of making a dice tower to go with the show so that I could roll up characters, which I've been wanting to do for a while. I want to use it in my role playing games. And my wife got me a bunch of He Man little minifigs um, from the dollar store. And that was sweet of her. And I wanted to figure out a way to kind of show those off rather than just being a little bit tiny on the shelf behind me. And thought, you know what? A giant old Castle Grayskull would be an awesome dice tower. I'm like, oh yeah, I can knock that out in a day. Well, I got most of it knocked out in a day, but I still got to paint it and everything. And that's going to be a minute. So I didn't have it for the show today like I thought. Okay, let's look up different types of wings while we're over here. Let's see. Now let's see, wing types. Because there's so many different types of wings on birds and stuff that like I'm kind of thinking something small like a swallow or something, you know? something small and agile would be fun as opposed to like gigantic intimidating terrifying looking wings but small almost cute wings i think would be neat and we don't see nearly enough of that kind of wing shape We usually get wings on characters that are meant for like gliding and hanging in the air for a long time and not for bouncing around and, and being active. And especially like if we're talking uh, somebody that's using this in battle, I would honestly think uh, a more active wing shape would be better to have you know not something that's designed for big slow flight but something that's really designed for working in and out of trees and you know things like that so we're gonna have a little bit shorter stubbier wings it doesn't have as much of an indent there so we're going to take that out. All 
Okay, now we're gonna resize it a bit. I work at high res, so I want to make sure I have all of the wings on here. I can, if I have to enlarge it and crop it down the road, I can without too much trouble because I work at high res, but I want to make sure I've got it first. Okay. And since this person has shadow armor, thinking like it's created out of darkness, it's created out of actual like solid shadow so i'm thinking like dark shadow ninjas like using shadow magic and this person has mastered this skill set but broken away from her cult of shadow ninjas and is now using the skills and abilities that she has to try and make the world a better place. Like maybe she got caught up in this when she was young and angry and a runaway and very quickly became a master of these skills because her anger and stuff helped fuel the darkness. But now she's learning how to reuse this and kind of atone for her sins. So which would say like ancient weapons would be the way to go. What kind of ancient weapons would be good for a bird? Like, I mean, swords. Swords are the go-to, but, and being able to like fly by and slash is always a good one. You know, I'm going to try these axe things, you know, that tend to have like a chain on them in Kung Fu, but I like playing with the shape of them and giving it more of a almost beak-like kind of like this shape. I actually made some axes like this at one point and uh, thought they would be awesome for throwing. They were not. Okay, we're going to leave that in there for now and keep playing around and see what we come up with. And don't forget, you guys can continue to suggest superpowers. I will keep adding to my list. You can comment. While you're dropping a comment, give us a like and a share and a follow while you're at it. And don't forget, you can follow us on all the places. You can follow us on Twitch and uh, YouTube. That's one of my favorite places because on Facebook got to give restream permission to share your name and stuff which is it's just clicking a link but some people don't want to do that but on youtube you don't have to do that so i like going in youtube because i can comment on everybody's videos and not have to worry about whether or not they're gonna see my name show up because that way they know hey that's old fish talking to me everybody wants to hear what old fish got to say 
That's the word on the street. That's pretty cool. I think this could be better though. This seems a little too angelic the way she was. Let's see how that looks in reverse. Yeah, I'm not crazy about That's pretty cool. I think that'll do. That'll do for what we're doing here. It's good enough for Green Zone. That's what they say. All right, turn off that layer. Whoops. No, we didn't want to turn off that layer. That's not what we wanted to do because that's got our instructions on. We want to turn down this layer. That's what we wanted. And we're gonna make another layer and I'm gonna do one more set of pencils on here, which I don't normally do, but I'm gonna do it for you guys. Cause you know, we're gonna tighten this up a little bit. Now it says shadow armor. How far do we want to take this armor? What style of armor do we want to do? That's what the quick cause man, there's a lot of armor, man. There's samurai armor, there's Greek armor, there's English armor. There's totally fantasy armor. And then she's got wings, which I'm kind of tempted to think that the wings are either like built into her armor or more likely like part of the shadow magic that she has learned to harness to generate this armor in the first place and these weapons. So I'm gonna say the wings are gonna be somewhat armored to at least on this forelimb here. Cause it just doesn't make sense to me that you wouldn't put some kind of protection on something so delicate and so easily injured. Especially if you're going to be going into battle and swords are swinging and whatnot. Like you put armor on your horse. If you're going in there, I would think you would want to put armor on your wings, but then I've never been one of those that understands the concept behind, you know, oh, the world's ending quick. Let me slip into my battle lingerie. That just aggravates me. But, you know, I am who I am. 
my brain, if it don't make sense, then it don't make dollars. All right, so she's ninja. She's a shadow ninja clan, but she's also wearing armor. That would lead me to say Japanese armor would be pretty much a given. Let's see what I can find. On the old Google machine. Her image is a Japanese armor. I'm thinking it needs to have some like runes inscribed on it and whatnot.
Hey, we got a new Facebook user coming in saying, hey, what's up, Facebook user? How are you doing this fine morning? We have rolled up a random list of powers, and we got winged flight, shadow armor, and uh, detect evil. So we have decided that we are doing a character that once was a soldier, a dedicated soldier in a shadow ninja clan that you learned to use all this shadow magic and generate all these powers. Thank you very much. It is an awesome combination. These charts I made to roll up came up with some really neat stuff, man. I've had such cool ideas come from Oh man, it's nuts. Anyway, so well she once was a dedicated soldier of this shadow clan. Now she uses those same powers to help fight evil and make up for the wrong that she's done in her life. Though she still looks terrifying in her shadow armor. And she's still a badass. She's not using those forces for the for good. Wish I knew it was calling me Facebook user again. I thought I fixed it. Man, I had it fixed for a hot minute and then all of a sudden I didn't. I don't know if it was an update or something. I, went, I clicked the link again and it took me back in and I gave it permission and, and it was done but yeah I had it fixed too and then it all of a sudden was gone I'm just playing around thinking this stuff through as I go. I'm probably going to change up some of it before it's all said and done. I'm trying to take some inspiration from the samurai armor and stuff, but not, you know, be a slave to it. thinking some clawed feet just makes sense, you know? I know it might be sexier if I put her in, like, skin-tight clothes, but that, that just doesn't seem to make a whole lot of sense to me. Let's see here. Midnight Comics says, Ooh, that looks so good. Thank you. Thank you, baby. I appreciate that. Loving the line art. Thank you, man. Can't wait till I get done with the colors. Ooh, that's going to be the good stuff. So use my random charts that I built just for this show so I could randomly roll up powers. Ooh, it came up with some good stuff. You know, I'm thinking this flying... Bird wing shadow armored expert 
power using ninja detect evil chick oh man she needs like she needs like a bird themed armor like that's that's what i'm thinking So, well, let's see. That's a bit much. The problem is incorporating like a beak and not completely blocking out your vision. I was already thinking about leaving her in like a ninja mask that covers up most of her face. So, And while we're here, if anybody has any questions or anything, or any questions on, you know, making comics or knocking out comic pages or anything like that, I am here to answer questions while I'm at it, because I'm all about sharing information wherever I can. If I can be a benefit to somebody, I'm all about it. I'm not a believer in hoarding that kind of information to myself. What's the worst that's going to happen? You're going to go out there and put out awesome books too? Awesome. That's what I want to happen. I want to read them. Just because you put out awesome books too doesn't mean I don't get to put out awesome books. That kind of mentality is ridiculous. Which title is this again? This is mostly for fun. This is mostly just an exercise in creating characters off the bat, but everything that I come up with that's cool that I want to use is going to end up in my book, Green Zone Life in the Blocks which is a continuing series from Freestyle Comics. And uh, in it, we uh, it takes place in a world where it's illegal to have superpowers. So as soon as you get found out that you've got powers, you automatically lose all your rights and your citizenship. And if you want to get your green card and you want to have a better life for yourself and get a job and you know, be able to own property and vote and all that kind of crazy stuff, then you've got to risk your life for five years as a civil servant in some form, whether that's joining the military or the fire department, or in the case of Green Zone, we're following a group of new recruits to the police force. And you end up with a bunch of people that are very poorly equipped to be cops trying to become cops so that they can make a better life for themselves and we're following this ragtag group of people around and you know calamity and horror and torture and issues ensue and it deals with a lot of like ingrained racism and bias and 
trying to overcome a, a system that was set up to work against you. Um, the idea that, you know, oh, anybody could pull themselves up by their bootstraps, but not everybody's starting from the same place. <laughs> Makes you want to color it. You know, that that could be fun. I ought to put the line art out when I'm done with it and let folks take a shot at color and see what we come up with. That could be really cool. That could be a lot of fun. Part of this whole stream was, you know, like I spend so much time making things like purely for social media and stuff anyway. Like I was already doing these drawings so I would have good fodder for TikTok to get attention. And I'm like, you know, if I'm doing it anyway, I might as well kill two birds with one stone and make a show out of it. And then I could also work on green zone pages and stuff and other things that I have to do. Like for my other podcast, Five Star Fridays, where we run down different superheroes. We started doing a versus night with uh, me drawing art of these two characters facing off, but that's a little bit much to get done in one hour of show. So I can do it here, let people actually watch the art if they want to, and then they can go over there and listen to us argue about the characters. So what do we think? I'm not 100% sold on the headpiece yet, but that's one of the nice things about working digital. I can always go back and change. All right, now we're going to flip it back to the original direction, which is one thing I love doing digitally. If any of you don't do it, you ought to pick it up, is start flipping your page throughout the process. Like in this case, I sketched it out, then I flipped it and drew the details, and then I flipped it back to ink. And any little problems like the eyes being wonky or the head being a little off or, you know, all these little things that we don't notice because our brain is designed to see faces and to see patterns. That's why we see faces in like, you know, a plate of bacon and eggs or the grill of a car. And so when we get close, you know, the eyes might be off, but our brain's like, oh, yeah, that's a face. No problem. And you know, we don't see that we need to change it. But when you flip it, all of a sudden, oh, man, it looks way off. And I know, oh, I need to change it. I need to fix the shape of that head. I need to fix that jawline. Uh, one arm's, you know, way longer than the other. Which, actually, I'm kind of noticing here, one arm is a little bit longer than the other. So, I'm going to see if I can quick fix it. And I didn't notice that when it was flipped around the other way. Notice it now. That's a little bit better. Clip Studio Paint has a feature where you can open two windows showing the same document and you can flip one. Have them side by side and work on both windows and it changes stuff in both windows. Oh, wow, that's neat. I didn't know it had that feature. I know it's got like a flip the screen feature, like for your view. And I ended up adding it. I don't know if you can see it. I added it right here at the top of my screen. So I can just click and have it flip it over for me. And that works great. The one problem, the one problem I have is, let's see if I can find a good image. Um, Yeah, it's trying to find an image big enough that's going to show up on camera. Okay. Let me turn this off for a second. In my book, Green Zone, uh, you'll see, like, over here, the stripe on her suit. Like, they've all got stripes, green stripes on one side of their uniform with their badge. And the green stripes mark them all as genomes, as part of the, geno the G unit. And because uh, we don't want any of them slipping through and we don't realize that they're genomes because a lot of them look human and, you know, well, we can't have them sneak by. So what's up, Facebook user? 
and because I keep flipping the page every once in a while I will end up forgetting if I'm flipped or not and I'll put the badge and the stripe on the wrong side and then I got to go back and redraw it that's the only problem I've really had it Glenda the window, window menus a tab click window canvas okay cool beans good to know it is super helpful it is super helpful I use it all the time all right, let's get the artwork back on the screen. My mouse is acting a little wonky, so it takes me a hair longer than normal. All right, let's jump into the inks for this expert ninja from a shadow clan that uses her shadow ninja skills to generate these shadow weapons and the shadow armor and her, her shadow magic helps her detect evil. Now what you see me doing here is I'm adding a color to my layer right there and you can do it to all your layers. There are preset colors or you can pick, you know, any color you want. Um, I have found that to be much, much, much easier than labeling my layers. What is up, J-Man? I'm glad you made it in. Man, I hope you ain't missing work, but man, I'm glad you're here, man. Good to see you. My old eyes have a hard time reading all these little tiny, tiny layer titles, and I only really lay, let I only name like groups when I put all the lettering together into one group, so I can turn it on and off. But when I color layers, like I'll color them. What's up, Katie? Uh, like I'll make it black for all my ink layers and all my multiply layers. I make purple and all my highlight screen layers i make yellow and all my accent special effects layers i make red and that is a whole lot easier for me to find a whole lot quicker especially when you're like trying to go through and turn off layers to find where a problem is or something or you want to turn off all your highlights and shadows i don't have to look through and read highlights and shadows and line art and pencils all i got to do is look for the yellow and the purple turn those off and i got my flat colors and I love that. It has worked out really well for me. So I like to offer that up as a tip to whoever I can. And now, once again, Fishy is going to be starting at the face because that's where I always start because that's the way I do. Don't know why I started that. Used to be I started on the shoulders for some reason. But now... Um, I always start like at the eyebrows, but since you can't see her eyebrows, I started on the beak in her armor. Because it's basically the same thing for her as eyebrows. I'm not sure about those eyes yet. I may not keep them. It might be cooler if it's just a hint of it being a bird face. And since I specifically didn't do like a raptor wing or something. I don't want to go too far into it. Though, honestly, I've never seen anybody with a sparrow mask before. That, that would take some major redrawing, but that could be cool. Maybe for a different character.
I love these rusty pen nibs I got from, uh, what is it? They do a lot of Procreate and Photoshop brushes, but they just did a series. They just released the same ones for Clip Studio, like Texture Grit Studio or something. I don't remember what it's called, but man, I love them. <laughs> oh yeah they do they skirmish and that's that's part of why i wanted to do like a sparrow style wing for this ninja because like you know like hawks and stuff they're not really designed for like super super mobility they're designed for like hanging in the air and then coming down strong on something i mean yeah they they fight and go after each other and you know we'll fight for food and things but like i wanted the agility of these small birds that just seemed like a much better wing to emulate if you're gonna be a ninja using your shadow magic to generate magical armor it seemed like a better bird to emulate to me But who knows, I'm not the end-all be-all authority on, you know, magic shadow ninjas. That'd probably be J-Man. From what I remember, I think J-Man used to be a magic shadow ninja back in the day, if I remember correctly. I could be mixing up two different people's stories, but I could have swore that's what he said. And you can say we have, oh yeah, Polkids, which are pretty much chickadees, and they have no fear, they mob the hawks, but you never see superheroes based on them. <laughs> Oh, absolutely. See, you get it. Katie gets it. She knows why I'm doing this. These birds are fierce. Just because they're cute doesn't mean they're not badasses. We want to focus on the ones that we think look tough, but man... Some of these other birds out here scrapping for real survival. Not just sitting here kicking back on an endangered species list being lazy. You know, Kate, I cannot quit thinking about how cool an idea that is to put these up and let people color them and see what they come up with. That's a really cool idea. You could base a villain on a Capper, Capper, Capper Kaylee? Bird, the males are so aggressive they'll attack anything that comes into their territory. I once saw a video of two fighting, an eagle came down and grabbed one of them. And the other an eagle as well! <laughs> No fear. K 
can't live in fear when you're smaller than everything else. I wouldn't know, but it sounds good. Turkey sized. That's a big old bird right there. Turkeys are a very misunderstood bird in my book. Because everybody bases their idea of what a turkey is on WKRP in Cincinnati. Hello, Facebook user. Glad to have you. Or like, you know, the big inbred birds that we eat for Thanksgiving. And that is not the same thing as a wild turkey. Well, some people will argue that they're the smartest birds around. I don't necessarily buy that. I think, I think they're more observant. I think they have very heightened senses. I don't think they're that smart because I am constantly seeing them, you know, like videos of them walking right up to hunters and whatnot. And checking them out but man you make a noise you have a glint of light and they will freaking take off and wild turkeys can fly everybody's like oh turkeys can't fly no wild turkeys can they're one of the few birds that can do a absolute vertical takeoff just a little tidbit I found out once years ago that I found was interesting and now it won't leave my brain. And speaking of aggressive birds, they can be terribly aggressive too. Though most birds can't really. Good gracious. Anybody who's ever had a rooster knows that. A friend of mine got a, got a cute little chick for Easter. This all was so cute. Until that chick grew up into a full-fledged rooster and ruled their front yard with an iron claw. And any time I got anywhere near it, that sucker would attack me. I had to walk home like a mile with one shoe on because this sucker attacked me, stole my shoe, and took it for his lover. And once he was done with it, I could have gone back for that shoe, but I damn sure didn't want that shoe back after that. Tiny cute velociraptors when they're mad. Birds are mean, man. I mean, I dig birds, but like, I always thought like, oh man, I'm going to grow up and I'm going to have a parrot and that's going to be awesome. Like I had all these animals that I just knew I was going to have when I grew up. Like, you know, I was going to have a pet raccoon. I was going to have a pet monkey and all this stuff. And then I actually grew up and became an adult and realized why they don't make good pets and, you know, and oftentimes, like for me, it's just as important, like whether I would enjoy having them as a pet 
is less important than if they could enjoy being my pet. And some animals will take to captivity no problem and enjoy it. Dogs and cats, big fans of, you know, being part of your own little personal pack now, you know, even if they don't like it, cats like being waited on. They dig it. Um, but, you know, a lot of other animals just never real will really get to enjoy it. They might put up with you. But they're never going to love you like a, a dog would. You know, my personal two cents. And if an animal's not going to be happy as my pet, I don't want it. If they're not going to be able to have a long, healthy life, I don't want it. Most big parrots would outlive their humans if kept well. And some of them lived to 80 years old and they have human toddler level intelligence. See, I always wanted a parrot. I always thought a parrot would be an amazing pet. They seem like they'd be a whole lot of fun. They'd be amazing. They can talk and all that stuff. Until I found out parrots are so smart that if you do not play with them enough and if you do not engage them enough and if you do not exercise that intelligence that they have and that community interaction, like they will legit lose their minds and start pulling out all their feathers and stuff. And like, they will have a psychotic break and never come back. They will always be, you know, this different crazy parrot now. And they will have breakdowns when their owners die and stuff. And that's too much responsibility for your uncle fish. I that, that once I realized like this animal could go nuts if I don't love it enough or if something goes wrong and, you know, God forbid something happens, you know, I love dogs. I wouldn't hurt a dog on purpose. I, I love dogs. But the fact of the matter is like you could kick a dog straight in the face and come back tomorrow and he's gonna be like oh i'm so happy to see you like you know they don't hold grudges for the most i mean like dogs can be beaten and stuff like it it can be bad i've seen dogs that piss themselves when somebody walks in the room. i'm not saying it doesn't happen but i'm saying like you can make a mistake with a dog and they're not going to lose their mind the thought of like you know if i don't play with this animal enough he's going to go crazy oh no that's that is not the situation I want to be in. Like that's too much responsibility. And and again, feels like to me, that's not a situation designed for this animal to be super happy. Not like if he was not like if he was in, you know, his own family in the trees in the Amazon. Uh parrots definitely hold grudges. See my ex brother in law got a little Quaker parrot. The dude that gave it to him had hatched it straight out of an egg. You know, when it got old enough to rehome, my ex brother in law got it. And this thing was the sweetest, kindest little thing and just loved to play. And like, if you threw your hat down, he'd run and get in it and start running around. And, and he was starting to try and talk a little bit. And he would kind of sound like he was trying to say, I'm a turtle as he'd be running around in your hat because we called him a turtle. And then, you know, and then one day, one weekend, my brother-in-law got his son, you know, for visitation that weekend. And I don't know what happened. Zach was little. Zach was really big. Like me, he, he was way too big and strong didn't know his own strength he hurt my kids playing all the time without meaning to um you know it was like having a little hulk running around i don't know what zach did but that bird was a mean vicious bastard ever after that nobody but my brother-in-law could get near this thing without it trying to bite them and you know even just feeding it became an opportunity to lose a finger to this thing and that scares me i don't know what happened i don't think zach did anything on purpose but he absolutely scared or upset or hurt this bird somehow and that thing was a mean vicious little jerk for the rest of the 10 years or so of his life which, you know, his life probably would have been a whole lot longer, but he was incredibly hard to care for. 
and you know nobody else could feed it and stuff. It was, it was miserable, and the bird was miserable. That's the thing that really bothers me is the bird was miserable. had a small Connor Perry who was so bonded with me he would bite anyone that touched him and then had an evil laugh just for just for biting those people yeah that's that's too much responsibility for me I don't begrudge anybody else that loves keeping birds but for me that's too much responsibility I already struggle with like what are we going to do when we have to like travel to a con and we have to find people to take care of the dogs but the dogs aren't liable to take anybody's finger off and the dogs you know they might be mad that we were gone for a weekend but I don't have to worry about them going crazy in most situations and never being the same because of something that I wasn't even there to see what happened to know what the damage was. And that scared me off. And I was like, oh, monkeys would be awesome pets. And then, you know, I found out that, you know, they're all going to get to that stage at some point where, you know, in a normal monkey's life, you would start to fight for your place in the pack and, you know, try and take over the leadership slot and you're going to become sexually mature and without you know girl monkeys around that's going to be an incredibly frustrating thing not really designed for a whole lot of wins there for the monkey that's just a situation looking for trouble I don't like that As much as I would have liked to have had a pet monkey, I would not like to have an angry, aggressive, sexually frustrated monkey. So I decided I had to give up on that. I always wanted a pet raccoon, you know? We're country. It's not impossible to find raccoons around here and honestly like there's a flea market around here that for years had a guy that was there selling baby raccoons all the time as pets I don't know where he got them I don't know if they were bred from his private breeding pair of domesticated pet raccoon I don't know what the situation was it was probably not a very good one, truth be told. And I was always like, yeah, someday I'm gonna go get one. Now I started researching it. Cause after finding out more about monkeys and parrots, I was like, yeah, maybe this is something I need to learn more about before I do. And I'm glad I did. Because again, they're like having a toddler around and like a monkey, it's having a toddler that can climb everything in the house and pick locks and and again you can't leave you can't go anywhere because if you leave they're gonna not do well with people coming into the house there are strangers coming into the house anyway and then I found out about things like they will always leave a little stack of poop by the door and by most of the windows any place it sees as a portal into its territory which is your house and it will leave a nice little stack of turds to discourage other raccoons from coming in on its territory and if you pick up and move this stack of turds it will stack up another stack of turds over and over and over again. I don't want a stack of turds by my door. It doesn't make me a bad guy. I just think raccoons are probably better off 
living in the woods, leaving a stack of turds around their territory where I don't have to see it. That's just me. I don't hate people who have raccoons. I just, I'm not a stack of turds in the house kind of guy. Monkeys can also catch a lot of human diseases. Absolutely. Yeah. And again, it really comes down to, can this animal be happy and healthy in my care? And like, name like fish, eventually you get into aquariums. And I've always been an aquarium dude. And I had very large aquariums. And I really got into native fish, like the local fish in this area, bluegill, brim, you know, bass, crappie, all these things like crawdads are freaking amazing to watch in, a, in an aquarium they are so much fun i will never eat them again after watching them they're disgusting but they're amazing it's like watching a monster movie live it's so cool but i learned very quickly that like even with fish that you don't think have great minds and you know contemplate if i caught a larger fish like you know half the size of the palm of my hand that fish would never be happy in a tank he would always be miserable always be grumpy always be aggressive and fighting but if i used a net and i caught them when they were little bitty like you do for like bait fishing like you go out and catch a bunch of little bluegills and put them on your hook and use them for bait those guys they would adapt to living in a tank super quickly and they would love it and they would eat food out of your hand and they would follow you around and all kinds of stuff like they made the best pets but you know i had to learn oh i caught something really awesome that i really want and i'd love to put it in the tank but he's too big and as much as i want one of this fish to complete this tank this guy would never be happy in my tank and he's going to make everybody else in the tank miserable. So I'm going to let him go see if I can find a smaller one. And, you know, it suited me well. And most of my fish were very, very happy in the tank and very fat and loving life. Some of them are just aggressive because they're aggressive, like, you know, bass or cichlids. And they're just kind of aggressive anyway. That's, that's what they do. They hunt all day. But... It amazes me the stuff we get off track talking about on here. Kind of like that better. Though I tell you, I got to say, man, the thought of a sparrow head more and more. Let me look one up so I can get a good reference. Sparrow head profile. looks I'm thinking man if you turn it way back on That looks, that looks pretty cool. Can y'all even see that? What do you think? Should I switch it or should I leave it? Sticklebacks make interesting aquarium fish, but are quite aggressive as well. Yeah. Ooh. 
my lovely wife shows up with reinforcements. Thank you, my love. My lovely wife don't want to be on the TV. She don't want to be an internet star. She's scared. She's scared she can't handle the fame. It'll go to her head. Next thing you know, she'll be the next Paula Dean. That's what she's afraid of. <laughs> God, I talk such nonsense. Spare type beaks can do some damage and also different to the vampire finches in the Galapagos Islands. I'm... <laughs> I gotta say, I think it is a much cooler design and so much less used. So, all right, turn that off. I am going to duplicate this. I'm gonna turn that layer blue and drop it down. And then, All right, let's see what we can do here. That's definitely more original. <laughs> I know too many useless facts about birds. Truth. Oh, God. That's one thing about the way my crazy ADD brain works. I have so many useless factoids about things that don't really matter to anyone. Every rare once in a while, it might come in handy on a trivia night or something. But for the most part, nobody cares. But by gosh, I know it. And it won't go anywhere. And that's what drives me nuts with my ADD brain. Like the, the fact that I can never remember conversations that we had. Of course, I've also got brain damage from heat stroke. So you know, part of that's not my fault. But the fact that I can't remember freaking conversations that we had. I'll forget days, weeks, all kinds of things. But by George, every joke that was in this episode of King of the Hill from 20 years ago. I remember every single one of those. no good to anybody but me because I laugh a second before the joke is said every freaking time when I rewatch the show because you know I know what's coming the shadow sparrow that just hit me that's kind of badass that is kind of badass like it's kind of deceivingly simple but man that is a cool 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 idea oh damn it's been an hour and 20 minutes already i was supposed to stop at an hour because my office is also the guest room for my lovely daughter-in-law and my grandbabies and it is time for their naps so all right folks this is how far we have gotten i'm using the wrong mouse trying to save this
and my battery's almost dead. So there we go. All right. Thank you guys for tuning in to School of Fish. I appreciate y'all showing up. I appreciate the comments and stuff. Like, I have ADD too, and it's weird the things you do remember. Can't remember what I ate yesterday, but I can tell you really random facts about birds. Yeah, baby. And I love Shadow Sparrow. Thank you very much. Man, I am really, I think this idea is cool. And I tell you what I'm going to do. When I get off of here and I get in the other room and get settled down, I'm going to upload this. So anybody that wants to take a crack at coloring it can for sure take a shot at it and see what you come up with. And I'm going to try and get it colored as well. And then I'll share that time lapse video. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I really enjoyed it. I really appreciate you being here. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, hopefully next week, Maybe I will have the dice tower ready to go, which would be cool. Um, I just got to find time to paint it amongst everything else that I have to do. But anyway, thank you guys for being here. Peace out. And I will see you Tuesday morning. Bye.